Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know, however, and I'm pretty sure you know this too because you'll have seen the thumbnail, the title, and you might even have read the description. But this gorgeous, bright look has actually been produced with the Revolution Slime palette. It's another one of their chocolate bar palettes. And you can see from here, it gives you a preview of what the colours are. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six pressed pigments in it. Doesn't worry me, just means that if you've got super sensitive skin or you do it, you put your shadows on without a primer, you might find it stains your skin a bit. Really doesn't bother me at all. But this is one of their Halloween palettes, and who would have thought you could get such a bright look from a Halloween palette? So if you want to find out exactly which colours I used, how well they blended or not and how hard I had to work to get this level of colour then my friend you you have the best seat in the house grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up because here it comes hey welcome back from the intro <clears throat> you will have seen this in the intro. This is part of Revolution's Halloween collection 2019. And this is the I Heart Revolution Slime palette. Which on the inside looks like that. Just fold the mirror down so you can get a good look. Very colourful, but I don't think it's very beginner friendly. Because even I sat here looking at this thinking, how am I going to do my first look with this then? That being said, we're going to do a look with it. Now, as always, this is a teaching channel. Uh, due to my chronic pain and the fact that I want absolute beginners to be able to follow what I'm doing, uh, I don't cut any blending out and I go at a pace that beginners can keep up with. If that's too slow for you, please use the speed widget up there somewhere and just speed me up because unless you tell me, I'm not even going to know you've done it. Right, let's get you zoomed in. Okay, now. I've got deep set eyes, which I've been heard referred to recently as double lidded eyes. Now, a lot of people with deep set eyes get told or mistakenly believe they have hooded lids because we have similar issues. We have transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. If we're cutting our crease, we can't just cut across the socket, we have to go onto the upper lid. And, oh wow, I've got a crease over here today. Hmm. Uh, even when we use glitter glue, we get a bare patch right through the middle. I'm going to explain to you the difference between hooded lids and deep set eyes and how you can follow any tutorial, whether they've taken into account hooded lids or not. Now, when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid. So I don't have a hooded lid. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to your lash line part or all of your mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. The way you can follow every tutorial is to grab a brush something like this or a pencil brush and sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes than the person doing the tutorial. 
deep set eyes. If I cover the visible mobile of this side, I really hope that swearing isn't getting picked up on my camera. If it is, I apologise. Right, so covering my visible mobile lid, closing my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again that tucks back away into the crease. And if I cover my static lid and close it, you can see again I've got lid that tucks back in and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that gives you the same issues that people with hooded lids have. All we have to do though is when we're doing our crease colour, every so often sit, check with our brows relaxed, and you can see the crease colour when our eyes are open. And that's so we've actually got the easier way around this. Right. I think I am going to use some of the Jeffrey brushes that I bought because well why not? So I'm going to go in with one of the synthetic ones to start with. I'm going to go in with the JS8, which is a nice round, fluffy, it's clean, it's just stained. If you've moved your crease up, just use a slightly smaller blender. Right, I haven't done swatches for this because, to be quite honest, swatches don't always give you a good indication anyway. I'm just going to go straight in. So I'm going to start off with radioactive. Now my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And I've got my usual Crow and Pebble primer on, eye primer. I do have a discount code for them, it's in the description box. Right, so you can see that radioactive picks up quite easily on the brush. I'm just going to start off. Okay, that's a good yellow. There's quite a bit of fallout with it, but probably because I didn't tap my brush off, but also I've not done my base yet, so I really don't care. Now I'm doing little circular movements going when I'm going towards the nose going in this direction then when I'm coming back going in the opposite direction because I've lost sort of 13, 15 stone over the last few years that combined with being 45 means my eyelids move so by doing this it gently moves your eyelids around so you don't get any of the white striping or the barcoding I'll show you what I mean this side because you can see I've got some really super deep creases just here that was caused when uh, the ophthalmic hospital, when I was five years old, pulled my eye around. Something chronic. Okay, and the fallout doesn't dust away very easily, so if you are the sort of person that does your base first, mm. you either need to tap off really well or put some powder down to catch fallout. What I like about this Crow and Pebble primer is that it's not sticky and even with my deep set eyes it doesn't crease as you can see and because it's not sticky you don't have to set it but you can start off blending straight away you don't have to tap the pigment on first to set the base and I've just found that it gives absolutely brilliant colour sort of reproduction you, you get it pretty much to the colour you will see in the pan especially if you're using a white base they've got uh, six different shades of the base at the moment obviously white is the lightest the two deepest are a deep chocolate brown and a black and then they've got sort of three light medium ish uh, skin tone shades so you'll be able to find one that will meet your needs don't stretch a lid out like this unless you've got deep set creasing already otherwise you'll end up with deep set creasing now I always sit back and just check the shape with my brows relaxed because unless you're James Charles and Photoshop 
your eyes, they are not symmetrical. And sometimes you have to do a slightly different shape on one eye, just so that the eyes look the same. Now, I've got a microfiber cloth here that I'm using to clean my brush with. Uh, I prefer this to a colour switch. Uh, you don't have to use a microfiber cloth, you can use a flannel, you can use a towel. Uh, I will admit, on days when I'm not filming, I've been known to use my pyjama bottoms or my shorts. I know. Oh, the hygiene. Right. I'm going to go into putty next, which is a sort of peachy, apricot-y colour. Again, you get a lot of it coming up on the brush. I'm just going to pop this under the yellow and blend the two together. You can see this is going on really nicely as well. And it's blending well with the yellow. They're blending really nicely together. You are getting quite a nice bright neon almost look, which I was not expecting. I have to be honest, I was not expecting this to go as bright as it has, but I'm not complaining. I'm doing the same over on this side. How's your day been so far? Has it been a good one? Are you at the start of your day watching me over your complex? Well, if it is the start of your day, I hope you're going to have a good one. If it's the end of your day and it's not been too good, I really hope tomorrow's better. So, get a nice blend going on here. They blended together so easily. I have to admit, the um, the I Heart Chocolate Bar format has improved. The formula has improved a lot from the early days when you really had to sort of work to get the pigment to build up to this sort of level. Um, just cleaning that brush. I'm going to get slightly more slightly more tapered brush. I'm going to go in with the um, natural haired one. No, I think I want slightly more tapered than that. But I'm going to go in with the another synthetic. This is a JS12. Again, it's clean. It's just stained. But I do always give it a quick wipe on the microfiber just in case anything additional comes off. And I'm going to go into, I'm torn between Toxic here and Volcano here. But given that this has gone so bright, I think I'm going to go into Toxic. Because it looks the brighter of the two. Now whether this is because this is a firmer brush, I don't know. But this is not getting as much kick up. But it is still picking up on the brush, so that's good. I'm going to run that through my crease. Wow. And I'm just going to buff all the way along that line just to soften the edges. But I'm not really going to take it up the eye because I still want this, this neon orange to have its moment. Or neon peach, I should say. This is more like neon orange, isn't it? This is such a pretty palette. It really is. So again, going into the toxic. I'm toxic, you're slipping under, takes the reason. 
This is where I'm monetizing it. I have a copyright strike on me. I do think that's ridiculous. I mean, if you're going to just, if I'm singing a couple of seconds of a song, I do think it's ridiculous that they stick copyright strikes on. Yeah, all I'm doing is promoting your song. So, you now you can see what I mean, I think, about the tiger striping just in there that I get. I do struggle with that a lot, unfortunately. This side, the, you know, the circular blending works because I don't have the deep set creasing on this side. But I do this side. Just sit back and check I've got the same shape both sides. Yep, that's lush. I really, really want to go into Gunge, which is a gorgeous tealy blue. So I'm going to use the same brush. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? I'm just going to grab a little mirror, just so I can look down into it and see what I'm doing, because being blind in this eye, if I close this one, not a lot of makeup happens. I'm just going to pop this on the outer edge. This is actually a satin. I'm just going to pop it on the outer corner of my eye there. That's nice. I think actually Toxic might have been a satin as well, just because of the the way it's looking in the pan. So again, pop a little bit of gunge on the outer corner. Bring it in just a little bit further. So, I'm really enjoying this palette. It took me a minute looking at it to decide what I wanted to do. But once I decided what I wanted to do, this is really performing nicely. Uh, I'm going to go in with a little bit of Lava Lamp. Which is the Satin Lilac. Such a pretty palette. Now bear in mind these satins are going on dry as well. I want a slightly softer look. I don't want to... If I wet these they'd go a lot shinier. That's not the effect I want for today. I want a bit of a softer look. Because we're starting to get into autumn. Or fall, as various countries refer to it. And I just... This is sort of... Trees starting to change colour and... Starting to get a nip in the air of an evening. Starting the evenings are starting to get a bit darker. I love when the evenings start drawing. Clean the mat off. And now I'm going to grab this tiny, tiny one, which is the JS13. And I'm going to go into slime because obviously that's the name of the palette and I'd be remiss were I not to use it. Again, this is a satin. And I'm just going to pop that right on the inner corner. 
I don't tend to do a cut crease when I'm first using a palette because I want to see whether the satins and the shimmers have enough opacity to cover the matte shade or whatever shade I've put through with the crease and it would appear that these do indeed have the opacity even when dry as you can see now with the other eye I am going to have to stretch the lid out otherwise the pigment packs into the crease but it packs in loosely rather than being blended onto the lid like I'm doing now and then as I blink or move my eye through the day I get it cascading down my cheek A. If I wanted the multicoloured freckle look I would do that now thank you and B if I'm wearing a contact lens that's really really quite painful at times right I am I really like this I'm going to pause you while I put some foundation on etc and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you uh, you will see me instantly. I will see you the very next time that I press the record button. I am back. I decided to go for beautiful turquoise brows to accent this bit here. Because, well, because I will felt like it really. <laughs> right, going back into this, which colours shall I use? I might have a go with let's have a go with aliens which is one of the shimmers I'm just going to run that along under my bottom lash line using this flat top brush you can use a pencil brush if you haven't got a flat top brush but I find this shape perfect for getting up under your lashes. I'm flinching this side because obviously I don't have any peripheral vision. Uh, and I'm very much on muscle memory and a rather distant viewfinder to make sure I don't poke myself in the eye. Which regular viewers will tell you I have done on many an occasion. Clean that brush off. And then I'm going to grab, this is actually the brush from the um, Tarte Swamp Queen palette that they did with Graveyard Girl. I love it because it's flat at the top, but it's chunky, so it gets really up under the lash as well. And I'm going to go in with a little bit, I want to use a different colour that I haven't used already. Um, hum, 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 let's go into Jelly, which is actually a matte shade and I'm just going to use that to buff along the lower lash line and just soften that green that we put down that's really pretty really pretty I'll have to do a look with this using the deeper colours as well Obviously, I was drawn to the bright colours today. Hmm. Right, okay. Highlighter time. I think I'll go in with my Juvia's Place Tribe Highlighter Volume 3. This was a gift from my friend Kay. And this is actually a lip brush that I bought from eBay about 10 years ago now. But it's the perfect shape. Getting up under the brow. And popping a brow highlight in. And then. For getting in at the corner here. Now I like to bring it along under my tear duct and just blend it in with the colour that I've run under my eyes. If you don't want to do that, you can just do it 
on the tear duct like that. But as I said, with my shape eye, I find it most flattering to bring it along underneath. Like so. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck highlight on the rest of my face, put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with my hair and I'll be back uh -huh. with the finished look and apparently I'm quite popular at the moment <laughs> see you right now I am back I use my Barium That's How I Roll Waterproof Mascara and Jeffrey's Wet Peach Gloss what do we think? I've got to be honest, when I opened this initially, I looked at it and I was like, I genuinely don't know what look I'm going to pull from this. And then when I started looking at the brights separately from the deep colours, I started to get a bit more inspired. So I'm not sure for beginners this is necessarily the best palette for you to start with because I mean, I'm not an expert, far from it, but I'm not a beginner either. And even I had to sit and think for a minute about what looks I was going to create with this. That being said, the pigmentation was absolutely fantastic of every single shade that I used. They all blended together without any problem at all. There was instant pigment and the pigment didn't blend uh -huh. away as you were blending colours together. So, I actually really, really like this new palette. Um, I didn't pick up the... They've got another one out, which was a red-based palette. But I've got all of the tones in that in other palettes that I've got, especially Blood Sugar. Um, it's, it's rare that you'll find me pick up a red-based palette now. But this, I really, really enjoyed. And I actually really like the look. Looking at this initially, you wouldn't expect to be able to get such a bright look from a palette called Slime. Well, I suppose the luminous green packaging should have told me something. Do I like it? Yes. Do I recommend it? Only if you're confident with, pet, with uh, patching colours together. And uh, you know, if you know your colour wheel and you know your colour theory you'll be absolutely fine with it. If not, you might find that you struggle a bit. So, there we go. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed because YouTube are still unsubscribing people left, right and centre without so much as a buy your leave. If this is the first time you've seen me, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed this film. If you've got this far through, I'm guessing you kind of liked it a little bit. A little bit, maybe. Just a little bit. Um, I've got a lot of other films that you can choose to watch if you're not quite sure. But if you have enjoyed this, it'd be awesome if you could hit the like button for me. Comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, you know, all those good things because it would be awesome to welcome you to the ever so wonderful 4F family that we are building. Right, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.